The question on everyone's mind, is the bond sell-off over? Are rates about to go in a different direction? How would we even know if they are? Well, one way you can tell, believe it or not, is from interest rates in Germany, European rates. German bond yields tend to lead their U.S. Treasury counterparts. We see this throughout recent histories, particularly where it comes to what we call the September effect. And the September effect is where global interest rates, not just in the U.S. or U.S. Treasuries, but also Europe, Japanese government bonds, they all tend to rise at the same time, starting around August, really in September, and lasting into October. In previous years, September effects, what we see is that Germany's yields tend to lead their U.S. Treasury counterparts out of September. 2018 is a very good example. What you see back then is German yields top out, and then they start to go lower from there. Meanwhile, U.S. Treasuries, they kind of stabilized around October 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, and then they went slightly lower, then higher again for another month into November. So Germany's rates led the change out of September effect, heading into a lower direction before treasuries followed along about a month later on. Looking to last year, September, October, 2022, similar idea, September effect, sharp sell-off across global bonds. They went up through September into most of October, but around October, German bonds, they started to leak lower, whereas treasuries remained relatively stable into early November. Again, just a lot like 2018. So German yields were moving lower before their U.S. Treasury counterparts followed along later. Again, we see the same general pattern. So if we're trying to get an idea of moving out of the September effect in U.S. Treasuries like German bonds, what do we see from Germany that makes us think the same thing might be happening? What we see in German rates is, well, we've, we've got that kind of indication where Yields have topped out for several weeks now, going back to October 4th, really, in the German in the German marketplace, where rates have been back and forth, but moving slightly lower. Now we're several weeks into it, more and more it looks like we're out of the September effect in Germany, heading into a more fundamental period where rates are going to reflect not whatever goes on in September, but what the economic and forward monetary and economic conditions might be moving ahead. And what are those forward economic ac uh, conditions? What are the what are the markets saying about risks to the general economy? Are the higher rates and higher inflation, or are we seeing more disinflation, recession types of, type of indication? And for that, we look not just to German yields, but also something like forward money curves in Europe, which would be Euribor futures. Euribor futures are a bet on where Euribor, a short-term money rate, is going to be at various points in the future. And really, these are just hedging instruments, derivatives. They give us a sense of what the market is really thinking about in terms of risks. So if we see Euribor futures that go up in price, down in indicated yield, especially relative to where they are today, more inversion in other words, that suggests there's more anxiety, more nervousness, more need to hedge using these derivatives for whatever the risks might be or the perceptions might be in any marketplace. And that's exactly what we see. We look at European Euribor futures, three-month term Euribor futures, ever since around the time, early October, October 4th, when German bonds started to look like they hit their top and began to roll over, we've seen Euribor futures, the inversion in that curve, deepen even further, going again back to early October. So we look at the entire, the entire European rates marketplace, what we see is more and more strong indications, number one, that the September effect has indeed started to wear off, and number two, where the markets might be heading next is into another downward leg. We got Euribor futures that are looking forward, the inversion in Euribor futures that just got to their deepest since May, which is an indication that risks and perception are going up, which are in the intermediate term, bond yield positive. So yields going down because forward rates going down and forward rates are going down because risk perceptions are rising. And all this European interest rate business tells us something about what we might be able to expect for also US treasuries. And if you look at the US treasury market, though it might, right, yields could still go higher from here, they do behave a lot like the September effect here in treasuries too. 
The question, therefore, is why are European rates acting the way they are, especially forward rates? What's bothering European markets that might eventually bother U.S. Treasury markets? That's what we'll talk about today. If we're out of the September effect, what are we rolling out of the September effect into? But first, I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you for joining me. Eurodollar University, we have memberships available, including a new benefit that we've added for members as well as DDA subscribers. I'm doing conversations and intend to do regular conversations with other guests. I did the first one with Mr. Brent Johnson, the milkshake man himself. We talked about the US dollar, Euro dollar dominance and why the dollar has remained dominant and whether or not it can continue to be. You can check out part of that discussion at our YouTube channel. We put part of it up uh, for everybody on the YouTube channel, but the full discussion, I guess I said, that's available for Eurodollar University members and Eurodollar University DDA subscribers. We'll be doing more of these conversations with other people in the future, so look for those as well. And all, all the information is available for you at eurodollar.university. Forward European rates, those are your Viber futures. Those are looking like uh, markets are becoming more nervous about something. German bond yields, and not just the 10 year, but also other parts of the German curve, those are starting to look, hey, we're outside the September effect, more fundamental properties in the German market. And those things telling us something about what we should expect, maybe should expect, likely should expect from also treasuries and the global bond market in general. And of course, the question is, why? What is now bothering German rates and German bond markets that maybe wasn't bothering them before we got to October? Because that's what you see consistently in the German markets around October 4th, even before the Middle East conflict. There was a change in trend. Uh, Euribor futures, more inversion. Uh, Ger German bonds, more, uh, lower rates, more inversion there as well. And I think one of the answers comes to us, believe it or not, from Christine Lagarde and the ECB. Just last week, the ECB voted not to raise rates for the first time in quite some time. And the reason they voted not to raise rates is because they agree with me that the economy in Europe is a complete mess and becoming more so. Here's what Lagarde said last week. The euro area economy remains weak. Recent information suggests that manufacturing output has continued to fall. Subdued foreign demand and tighter financing conditions are increasingly weighing on investment and consumer spending. The services sector is also weakening further. This is mainly because weaker industrial activity is spilling over to other sectors. I believe we've talked about this before. The impetus from reopening effects is fading and the impact of higher interest rates is broadening. Maybe we'll, be, we'll see. But essentially, Europe's economy is incredibly weak. And so the European Central Bank said, well, if we believe interest rates are having an impact, then maybe we should pause here because it's looking incredibly weak. What Europe, what Europeans had thought up to this point was that the disinflationary boomlet that we've talked about in the United States would help Europe stave off further recession. Now, of course, there's an argument about whether or not re Europe is in recession now. I believe they've been in recession since last year and have not been able to get out, get out of it. But either way, moving forward, the question is whether the situation will get worse. And even the ECB is saying, it looks like the situation is about to get worse. Continuing here, the economy is likely to remain weak for the remainder of this year. But as inflation falls further, household real incomes recover, and the demand for euro area exports picks up, the economy should strengthen over the coming years. Well, first of all, coming years, that doesn't sound really good given that today things are looking bad. But other than that, what she's really saying is we're hoping that we see the economy falling off, maybe heading toward recession, but maybe another disinflationary boom will trigger a recovery in the European economy before it gets to be too far. So the European Central Bank in pausing their rate hike says, yeah, the European economic situation, not good. And it's not good in part because of the global trade recession, which we continue to talk about globally synchronized. Europe is a glimpse of our own future. But more than that, merely hoping that the disinflation that comes with all of this economic weakness will somehow solve all of their problems and combine in just the right fashion at just the right time for Europe to hit the Goldilocks soft landing. 
I think the European Central Bank and Christine Lagarde understands that the chances of that happening are incredibly slim. And the European bond markets are pricing the chances of that happening, happening are becoming slimmer by the, by the day even. So the expansion and inversion in Euribor futures is an increasing, increasing need to hedge against the, the possibility, which was always pretty strong, that Europe and the entire globally synchronized economy does not hit the soft landing. So speaking about what, what that means going forward, Lagarde continued when asked about rate cuts. That, of course, the Europeans have absolutely no interest in rate cuts whatsoever because they believe the soft landing is still in play. And they're also, in, uh, also of the belief that inflation risks still remain because of the labor market, the Phillips curve. Until they see the unemployment rate spike as much as you know, a significant amount and the consumer price numbers fall further than they have just recently, as we'll see just in a moment, what they're really afraid of is that inflation becomes entrenched in expectations. And so the European Central Bank says we have absolutely no plan to cut rates when the markets are saying we're increasingly confident that you're going to have to cut rates because of the disinflationary boom that we just experienced from the early part of this year is increasingly wearing off. And ironically, one way we know that's true, one way we can really see it is in the consumer price numbers themselves. The Germans, they just reported on their CPI as well as their HICP for the month of October. So these, are, these numbers are the first look that we have at European consumer prices in October. And what they show is just what Christine Lagarde said. Not the second part about inflation pressures and labor markets, but really weak demand having an impact on consumer prices. So again, you can see why bond markets in Europe are beginning more, getting more and more nervous, more and more hedging. The German CPI in the month of October year over year was 3.8%. That's down from 4.5% in September. And it was 6.1% in August and July. Now, as Lagarde said last week, some of that is due to base effects, meaning we're comparing prices this October compared to last October when last October prices were still rising through the roof. So some of that is the base effect where we're comparing the high prices last year, but not all of it is. In fact, a good chunk of it is because of disinflation and a touch of deflation. We, look at, we can see that when we look at the monthly numbers. The German CPI for the month of October was zero. Despite the increase in oil prices, energy, and some food prices, the CPI in Germany for October, 0.0% month over month. It had been rising at a 0.3% month over month rate the four months prior to October. So what is that? September, August, July, and June. So four months during the summer, already weak, already disinflationary, and then we get a zero in October. And it wasn't just the CPI. The HICP, which is a different method of, of, of calculating consumer prices, the Harmonized Index of Consumer Prices, that one was negative in October, minus 0.2%, down from 0.2% month over month in September, and 0.4% in August. So slow down in the yearly rates, slow down even a negative in the monthly rates, demand is increasingly weak. And Lagarde says that that's the reason why they're going to pause. And the markets are increasingly nervous that the demand being weak is not just we're heading into a Goldilocks soft landing, that we've already missed the runway. We've already, the European economy is already experiencing too much weakness after experiencing the disinflationary boom that didn't keep Europe out of recession or didn't get Europe out of its prior recession. So betting on another disinflationary boom right now to save Europe and the rest of the world maybe seems like an increasingly bad bet. We got more information too, including European lending data. This, is only go, this only goes up to September, but the credit crunch that is developing in Europe took a turn over the summer too, a turn for the worse, as you might expect. European lending in particular to non-financial corporations or business lending 
That tumbled in August as well as September. Lending to households was relatively stable, but lending to businesses, which had been flat to slightly lower, suddenly took a negative turn again late summer. Again, we see this everywhere, this inflection point. Summertime, the disinflation boom wears off. Lending, banking, all of that facing considerably worse prospects heading into late summer and now into the autumn. So if there's a... There's a reason why markets are trading the way they are. There's a reason why consumer price numbers in Europe and other places around the world are getting weaker and weaker. And it's not rate hikes. It's the combined impact of all of these negatives. And again, going back to what Christine Lagarde said last week for the ECB, she mentioned specifically how banks are becoming more and more risk averse, which we know has more than just an impact on the macro economy. It also has an impact on the monetary system. This is what Lagarde said. Moreover, credit standards for loans to firms and households tightened further. Banks are becoming more concerned about the risks faced by their customers and are less willing to take on risks themselves. They've already cut back on lending to non-financial corporations. They're likely to look at the same for household loans in Europe, if not go a step further there as well. And so the credit crunch that has been developing all of this time becomes a more serious problem for Europe's economy. So taking this back to the beginning, we want to know if the, if the sell-off in global bonds is over with. And if it is over with, what that means, what comes next. And one way that we can tell if the sell-off is over with, and is also conveniently we can tell what might be coming next, we look at German forward rates as well as German current rates. The forward rates show an increase in inversion across the Euriber curve, which suggests more and more nervousness to the point of hedging more and more seriously against these very risks that the ECB has just acknowledged as a reason why they're pausing their rate hikes. And the inversion in the Euriber curve has gotten to the most extreme we've seen since back in May when we were talking about bank failures. So a high degree of hedging, increasing nervousness that is then spilling over to the German curve, the German bond market, where we see now for several weeks what looks like to be the after September effect, more fundamental pricing going back into long-term government bonds. And so from these indications, as well as why we see these indications, we can make some judgments about what we should expect in treasuries and in interest rates in general across the world. The September effect looks like it's over with or increasingly over with. It might still have some lingering impacts. And the reason why, first of all, it's over with and what comes next, we see that all across the European economy as a glimpse of our future. If you want to see the conversation I did with Brent about the dollar, the euro dollar's dominance, at least the part we put up on YouTube, it's linked below me here. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University subscribers who get the full video, as do Eurodollar University members. Until next time, take care.